I actually didn't start out thinking I was going to be in radio, but I was into theater in uh, in high school. I was really, really into acting. Um, I was doing like four, five, six productions every single year, um, all the way up until my senior year of high school. And I had been going through, like there was a bunch of stuff going on at school. I was still at the time closeted, so I didn't know why I had a major crush on this guy that was bullying me at school, or like this this woman that that I that, that was also bullying me at school. I was like, why am I really attracted to these? I don't understand. <laughs> and I didn't have the words to describe it. So um, I, I went through a lot in high school, but um, while I was in... Uh, uh, while I was going through senior year, um, I was trying to figure out what I was going to do with my life because I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to make it as an actor. I need to find something else that's creative that I can do. I don't really have a whole lot of like understanding of music, so I and I tried to, to play an instrument. I'm terrible at it. Um, so I got to find something else to do. So I, um, my, my dad was like, hey, what if we... I, I know a guy that works at this radio station in San Jose. Why don't we go and we'll tour the place and kind of see what's going on? Well, that guy was uh, Chris Jackson, who currently does mornings on um, on uh, uh, 98.5 KFOX in San Francisco. At the time, they were in San Jose. And he was doing a morning show with Greg Kinn. I don't know if you know who Greg Kinn is. He's a, a big rock and roll legend from the... Uh, uh, from years ago, he had two big songs. There was Jeopardy, Our Love's in Jeopardy, baby. And the other one is They Don't Ride Them Like That Anymore. Anyway, so he's he's also a Bay Area guy. So he started doing mornings in San Jose with Chris Jackson. And Chris Jackson is a family friend of ours. So I came into the studio um, one morning. It was like, you know, 8 o'clock in the morning. I didn't, it, you know, I was like barely awake because I was a, you know, a high school kid. And you're never awake at 8 o'clock in the morning. Uh, even when you're at school. So I, I go into the studio, they sit me down, and they throw a microphone in front of my face, and the, the host goes, we're really lucky we've got Ringo Starr here in studio with us. And I went, well, yeah, I'm Ringo Starr. It's really nice to meet you all. I just flew in from Liverpool. How are you doing today? And like, <laughs> we had this terrible interview. I'm, you know, 17 years old. I'm a dummy. I don't know anything about, like, acting or radio or any. I was just like, yeah, okay, I'll just... Improv, sure, why not? So we improved for like a couple of minutes, and then he goes, "Okay, so who we actually have here is uh, your name is Greg. Uh, you're a high school student, yeah." And they just kind of interviewed me for a couple of minutes, and then you know the mics go off, and uh, Greg Kin turns to me and he goes, "You could do this," and I'm like, "I can," and he goes, "Yeah." Chris, yeah, you, you think you could do this, can't you? And then Chris goes, "Well, I went to this college in Fremont, so." Uh, it's a community college, Ohlone College. They've got a great radio program. Um, why don't you go there? You're, you're what, 17 years old? Awesome. Hey, if you want to intern here for, uh, you know, a couple of months, and then when you turn 18, we'll, we'll hire you on as a board op or something. But, yeah, go get your education over at, K, uh, over at KOHL, and we'll, uh, we'll work something out. And I'm like, okay. <laughs> so I go to this college, and, uh, like, no joke, Marie, this is an amazing, it, it was an amazing program. Like, oh, really? the way that they have it set up is um, the instructors are all, like, management uh, at the at the radio station. So they have, like, there's the operations manager, there's the, you know, promotions director, um, and then there's the, the, um, the GM, and they all teach specific classes um, at, about, like, how to run a radio station. And then the on-air portion of it is a top 40 station. So they're forcing, they're basically forcing you to understand how to work within a corporate radio environment. Um, so they taught, they taught everything there. So I learned a little bit of engineering. I learned a lot about like audio production. Um, I learned how to put together a show, deal with callers, uh, do traffic reports, which were terrible, but that foreshadowing for something that's coming later. Um, and I was like, whoa, this is this is wild. Like I, I actually really want to do this. And so while I was while I was going to school there, I you know started working as a board op for K Fox, and I was running back when they had live sharks games. I was helping them board op sharks games, which is a whole process, very complicated to run the broadcast portion of that. Um, and I, I'm like I'm an 18 year old idiot. I didn't know what I was doing, but I was like, uh, yeah, sure, I'll I'll try this. Um, I ended up taking in uh, an announcing class at Ohlone taught by um, a guy by the name of Steve Taylor, who was the production director at Mix 106.5 in San Jose. 
and uh, I, I got to meet the guy, and he's awesome. And he goes, hey, so you have a theater background, don't you? And I said, yeah. And he goes, I might have a job for you. <laughs> and I'm like, what? <laughs> so he, uh, so he, they have me come in to, uh, to interview over at Mix, and what they needed was they needed somebody who was going to be around during the weekday to help Steve out with production. And um, I kind of knew a little bit about audio production, um, but Steve was like, ah, I'll, I'll teach you the rest of the way. And I, you know, they gave me a, a weekend shift, so I would only work, you know, you're limited to 25 hours a week when you're a part-timer. So I'd go in during the week and I'd work like, you know, four hours, three days a week. And then, you know, I'd have my two shifts on the weekend all while going to school. I And then I was also doing overnights on KFOX. So I was basically working myself to death, but you know, when you're 19 years old, you're not sleeping anyway. And it was around that time that like uh, K Fox was like, "Hey, so you know, you're working for our competitor," and I'm like, "Oh yeah, well, I'm on the air over there." And my my operations manager pulled me aside and he goes, "You can quit here. It's okay. I don't. I'm not going to think less of you. Like you're awesome. I you know, I'm glad you worked here, but this is a better opportunity for you." And I'm oh, like, "Wow, awesome. Thank you." So yeah, I said sure. I so I quit at uh, at K Fox. Um, started working, you know, basically uh, uh, just working at uh, at Mix, and I was doing at the time some tutoring of um, of other students at uh, at Ohlone College, and um, it was like uh, around twenty eleven ish. Um, I was like, I I need to do something else. Like I need to, I because I'd been doing it for a couple of years, and I was like, this is fun. But I need a change. I was still living with my parents. It was kind of, uh, you know, I, I I had a I had a girlfriend at the time, and I was like, I need to do something else, and we need to fix something. So I was like, okay, I'm gonna. She was from Michigan. I moved to Michigan. It was a terrible idea, because um, that didn't last. But uh, but in but I got a job at. Um, a news talk station at uh, in in Grand Rapids, um, News Radio Wood thirteen hundred and one hundred six nine FM, um, and I was board hopping there again. So I was like, oh, okay, well, I guess I'm back to board hopping again, twenty five hours a week. And the um, the the guy over at uh, at the the local country station was like, hey, you have on air experience, yeah? And I said, yeah. And he goes, well, I need somebody, anybody to do this specific shift on the weekends. Can you do that? And I'm like, yes, I'm gonna do it. Um, and so while I was there on the weekends, I started talking to a buddy of mine that just a friend of mine that was there and he was doing, um, work board hopping for the local sports station. And, um, we realized that we had a lot in common when it came to like comic books and video games. And we were like, what if we just, what if we podcast? And this is like maybe 2012. We're like, yeah, let's podcast. Sure. Why not? So we started podcasting. Um, we, our show is, you know long since defunct, but um, uh, we were the court of nerds. And so we put this whole thing, there were four of us and we, we would just come at it from the, the four pillars of nerdery. And we would, we would talk about nerd stuff. Um, I love like, that. It's a great name too. At the time, um, our boss uh, was like, Hey, so this thing that you're doing on the weekends, we need to talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> and we're like, uh oh, are we in trouble? Turns out, yeah, we're in trouble. They they didn't want us doing it. Uh, like if we were gonna do it from the studios, you know, we had to make sure that it was sanctioned and that we were doing content that the radio stations could be. And there's not currently a radio station that this fits on, so we need to, you know, adjust your, you know, you need to no cussing and this and that. And that we were like, oh, oh, okay. So we basically were like, um, all right, well, I guess we're, I guess we're just gonna do this on the DL now. <laughs> So we took everything out, you know, out of the radio station. We cut ties with the radio station. We're like, I mean, we would have done it with through the station, but they didn't want us anymore because mm -hmm. nobody wants to talk about comic books or video games on the air on, you know, any of the seven radio stations that they had in that cluster. Um, so we were like, all right, I guess we'll just kind of do our own thing. And so we ended up interviewing like a bunch of uh, big time, like uh, comic book uh, uh, authors and writers. And we ended up uh, uh, connecting with a bunch of um, like video game developers 
and we had just a total blast. We ended up as uh, moderators for the local uh, Comic Con convention. We had a great relationship with Grand Rapids Comic Con, interviewing like big name people and voice actors on stage. And the guy behind Ren and Stimpy, we talked to him on like we were the moderators of that panel. Um, and it was because awesome. of the podcast, because of the podcast, because we actually like were trying to build something, but the radio station didn't want any part of it. Um, because they could not see the um, they couldn't see the value in what we were doing. Of course, they couldn't. Foreshadowing again for something that's coming later. So we um, so it, it kind of started at, at a certain point around like 2016. My life started falling apart, um, and like the podcast basically fell apart. Two of the guys uh, uh, had kids, and so they were like, ah, oh, we don't really have time to do this anymore, and so it kind of was like, oh, all right, well, we wished, we wanted to continue doing it and make money from it, but we had no idea how to how to do that. We were making, like, I think just enough money to pay for our website. <laughs> so it was like, yeah, this isn't exactly going to be lucrative, guys. So we kind of, we ended up cutting ties, and it was around that time that I called, um, uh, they, well, so they, they also were having me, um, that radio station, by the way, was also having me do, like, traffic reporting, and I was doing, um, uh, 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 which was a whole thing, and I, I was producing the morning show uh, on the talk station, and also producing the midday talk show, and, like, doing afternoons. I was working, uh, you know, again, it was this, once you, once a, a management realizes you know how to do a bunch of stuff, they'll be like, okay, so we need you to do this one thing, and it's like an engineering thing. I'm like, okay, well, we need you to do this other thing. Well, it was, you know, live, it was a, a board hopping a remote, or we need you to do this, and it's traffic reports, or hey, we need you to do this, and it's news reporting, or so I just got, kind of was getting bounced around and ping-ponged all around. Well, my life was also falling apart, so I was like, I need, again, I need to make a change. So I, um, I called my old mentor, Steve, and, uh, and he goes, yeah, well, I'm looking to retire. Do you want my job? And I'm like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I moved back to San Jose, and I take the job as a production director for, for Mix. And as part of that, because nobody has a single job in radio anymore. It's multiple jobs. So as part of that, I, had, I was doing production directing and evenings on Mix 106.5. And I had probably about, man, like, this was probably the, or this was the dream job. Like, this is what I wanted to be doing. I love production. I love commercials. I love entertaining people. I like being on air and making content. And, you know, they, they had us doing, you know, two blogs a day. Okay, well, I could do two blogs a day. That's fine. Easy. Um, you know, social media. Well, I know how to do social media now. And well, we need you to interview this random person. Well, I've been interviewing people for, you know, now 10, uh, 10 plus years. I can do that. Um, well, we need you, uh, you know, we need you to do this. Some engineering stuff. Well, I could do that. Or, you know, well, we need you to do this. Oh, I can do that too. So I just kind of collected these. As um, uh, my friend Drew, uh, Drew McCarthy, who used to be in uh, uh, Afternoons, on, uh, on ESPN 961 in Grand Rapids, Michigan, once told me, be the sponge. And so I would be the sponge. I would pick up everything as I could. And we actually had a really good team at Mix. Like, uh, all of us, like, we, we, it wasn't just that we were coworkers. We all were, like, we would collaborate. Like, we would go in, in, in the hallways or, like, we would, like, FaceTime each other when we're in the other room and, like, uh, uh, be like, hey, I got this idea. What do you think of this? And we would... Yeah, that sounds great. Um, and then we would have like these collaborative meetings every Tuesday where we would sit down and we would just talk about like, okay, so we do need to do this like corporate giveaway thing that every radio station has to do. What what else can we do to make this better than what they want it to be? And so we would just BS and every idea was considered and it would be, some of them were terrible ideas, but other ones were like, no, this is, that's actually, that's got something. Um, and we would, uh, like, we would work with promotions to be like, okay, so, you know, Kesha is coming to town. What can we do with Kesha? Well, who wants the tickets? Okay, well, we'll draw straws. Who gets the tickets? You know, well, we've got this X number of, of these and then, like, two VIP tickets. And so, uh, Greg, do you want those tickets? Yes, absolutely. What are you going to do for them? Okay, well, i got to come up with something. Yeah, so I was like, uh, Kesha or Cash Money. And so I was like, okay, well, what if I played, you know, Cash Money Millionaires and I have people try to figure out, is it a Kesha song or is it Cash Money Millionaires? 
very easy to determine. Well, so I decided, like, instead, I would do this whole thing where um, I would only play Cash Money Millionaires. So people would call in, and I'd play the Cash Money Millionaires song, and I'd say, oh, is this Cash or Cash Money? And they'd be like, is this a trick? Like, it's Cash Money. <laughs> yeah, you won! Congratulations! And then on Friday, I did this, so I did that all week. Uh, and then on that Friday, the woman called in, and I said, okay, so here's the song that we played on uh, on Monday, and it was Cash Money Millionaires. Here's the song we played on Tuesday, Cash Money Millionaires. Here's the song we did on Wednesday, Cash Money Millionaires. Here's the song we did on Thursday, Cash Money Millionaires. And uh, so what do you think it's going to be today? And she goes, I mean, it's got to be like, it's got to be Kesha, right? And I said, okay, well, let me play the song. And it was Cash Money Millionaires, the exact same song. And she was like, what? <laughs> I guess that's, that's not Kesha. And I said, are you sure? Let's hear it again. I played the song again. And she's like, what is, I, you could actually like hear her getting more and more frustrated. It was like I was trying great. so hard not to not to like die on the air. I was cr I was crying. I was laughing so hard, and I was like, "Okay, but let's listen to it one more time." And she goes, <laughs> "Okay, it's 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 cash." It, she goes, uh, "Okay, fine, it's Kesha." And I said, "No, it's Cash Money Millionaires." But you still won, and we did this whole thing. It was like a a minute and a half long break, and afterwards the program director came in and goes, "I have not laughed that hard in." in so long what the hell are you doing and i'm like i don't know i'm just having fun with people and that's such a simple thing you did and like people were talking about it and they were like tweeting at us about it and they thought it was really funny and like you know we were responding no the song is actually it's kesha like and we, we just kept like messing around and telling people no it's actually it's a kesha song it's obviously cash money millionaires song um but we would do stuff that was like even outside the format where like you know we had monster jam tickets well we're a hot ac station so you wouldn't think oh monster jam is going to be a big deal so i was like okay well you can't just say monster jam on the air you have to do the monster jam yeah. and so i would have people call in and do the monster jam voice and i say okay well what do you want well the monster jam voice and i said okay but if you want the tickets you have to do the voice can I get some Monster Jam tickets? So you get people that would call in and they're like, uh, you know, old ladies who wanted these tickets and they'd be like, Monster Jam! It was the funniest thing. And so, you know, what I would do is I would take those, um, those pieces of the call of them saying stuff in the Monster Jam voice and I ended up mixing them together so that on that Friday we did this big collage of just everybody doing the Monster Jam voice. Um, and then had a final person come in and, and, and do the voice, and we added it to the collage, and it, like, turned into this whole, you know, like, on-air thing. People loved it. Like, we got so many calls and, like, comments and, like, yeah, when is Monster Jam coming back? What, what a great way to crowdsource and, you know, play into, again, the community. They're a part of what you're doing, and then you're getting yeah. to play with your production side that you like doing. So it's amazing. Exactly. It's so much more fun when you include the audience on, in on, when you make them in on the joke. That's what they want, is they want you to, they want to be in on the joke. They want to know that whatever it is that you're doing, it's like, hey, we, we know what this joke is. So that makes it even more fun. It's like you create inside jokes with your audience. Around, like, 2020, everything changed because, of course, it did. You know, we all went remote, but because all of us kind of knew how to work from home, it was a super quick transition, and we were able to do it. It was a nightmare getting everything set up and like working out the details. But it was, um, we were still able to do a lot of like really creative things. We still collaborated and it was also around that time that corporate decided, hey, we're gonna start making job cuts. So they start cutting staff and who they started cutting were all of our support staff that actually were working with us and helping us. So all the promotions people that would come in and help me voice spots, well, they're all gone now because we don't have promotions. Our promotions director who was fantastic and helped us collaborate and like had amazing ideas for how to put things together, well, now she's gone. Our promotions assistant who was like the brain, the, 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 the brain behind so many of these ridiculous things that we would put on and do, he's gone now. So we had to like, as these jobs started getting consolidated into fewer and fewer hands, it was like that meme of somebody trying to hold all the limes. It's like, well, I can't hold all these limes. And you can't hold all these jobs if you're juggling so many jobs. Um, and your morale at the same time, because you had such a great thing going. It, so it plummets. Yeah, exactly. So um, it got to the point where, you know, uh, 
it, it, one of the radio stations really started struggling, and um, we understood that, like, okay, if if the station is struggling, like, we, we want to collaborate, we want to do well together, and we want to, you know, if, if we both work together, we can succeed. Um, well, uh, K-Bay started doing really poorly, and because K-Bay was doing poorly, revenue started going down, and so they were like, okay, well, we need to do something, so they fired our program director, um, and that program director was amazing. He helped me when I came out in 2020. Um, he helped me get, like, uh, uh, I was able to, uh, um, he helped me network with, with Silicon Valley Pride. He helped me, like, we, we would have, like, hour-long discussions every week about, like, how to present myself as bisexual on the air and, like, how to talk about being bi in a way that will help the audience connect. And we saw the fruits of that when we would show up at, like, Pride events, and I'd have my big bisexual flag, and I would be waving it around, and I'm wearing a radio station t-shirt, and I would have people come up to me and be like, I listen to you, and I'm also bi, and, like, you helped me understand this, this aspect of me. Um, it... I cried like it was the greatest thing in the world. That was twenty uh, uh, Pride twenty twenty one was one of the greatest uh, uh, was one of the best days I'd ever had in radio, um, and it was because I was able to meet with people and we we, we we talked and I you know I started moderating panels for um, for Silicon Valley Pride and um, oh god it was amazing. And you were having the support um, and being allowed to be yourself on the I air. I was allowed to express myself. I think that the thing that most um, managerial types don't quite understand is if you don't get your employees to feel passionate about the job, they're not going to be passionate about the job. If you don't work with them to fuel their passions, you're not going to get a return on your investment. Um, it was also around this time that rent was going up, so that was that's where things started really going. Because you know it's it's expensive everywhere. Um, so anyway, my boss my boss gets fired, and I felt it was like a, a, a I knew it was coming, but at the same time it was like a gut punch. Um, and what a difference uh, a good manager makes. Because the next person they brought in was not as engaged with us and didn't care as much. He doesn't live in San Jose. He doesn't know San Jose. And he immediately was like, well, you can't talk about being bisexual on the air. And I'm like, why not? And he goes, well, because it will alienate listeners and, and people who aren't bisexual. I'm like, that's, that's not how that works, man. <laughs> and he goes, well, I'm the program director. You do what I say. And I'm like, Okay, <laughs> like so immediately I'm I'm immediately like not passionate about that anymore because if you tell somebody uh, uh, if you if you punish somebody for living them their dream, you punish them for living their through their identity and connecting with people in a positive way, what is that going to do but destroy your relationship with that person? A lot of our history has been destroyed. So having somebody on the air that is queer, that is able to talk about some of these experiences to educate people. And even even if you're just doing TikToks that are like educating someone about your identity, that's still reaching more people. You have a you have a, an opportunity to meet people that are just like you. You have an opportunity to connect with someone on such an amazing, uh, uh, on an amazing level. And if you tell someone they can't do that when they go on the air, right out of a Lady Gaga song, but Lady Gaga is is biromantic, by the way, so she's a part of the community. You coming out of a Dove Cameron song, Dove Cameron, very famously bisexual, and I can't talk about bisexuality. What are you talking about? Everybody who listens to Dove Cameron knows that she's bisexual. Everybody that listens to Lil Nas X knows that he's gay. And taking that out of the equation. In the, in the name of making more money is just shooting yourself in the foot. You're totally destroying your reach by not acknowledging that and by not allowing that representation to flow through. So that continued, and it was a whole thing. Over the span of 14 months, I it was the worst 14 months I'd ever had in any job ever. Like, amazing highs down to terrible lows. 
and it was like we were working long hours. They started cutting, you know, it, we, well, we expect everyone to be doing this now. And instead of two blogs a day, well, now it's five blogs a day. And I'm like, so, and it's this, there was this whole back and forth too, because my, um, because I worked at a, a news radio station, I kind of understood how to frame a news story. I don't, I'm not a journalist, but I can kind of like put together a news story. I understand SEO. I understand, um, all of the, uh, uh, you know, the, the, the internal mechanics of, uh, uh, of putting together a blog with c certain keywords and making sure that your, um, your keywords are specifically like searchable and things that people are interested in. If they're going to be going to Google search, you want to optimize your SEO. So your page ends up within the first five results. Um, and I was told that I was told that that none of that mattered just post blogs, just, it doesn't matter if you fill out the SEO, just post blogs. And I'm like, but that's only going to shoot us in the foot. It, what's the point of doing a blog if you're creating content that nobody wants to, wants to consume? Like, why would I write a blog about, you know, Miley Cyrus and literally it's a paragraph. Nobody's going to want to click on that because TMZ is doing it better. Nobody is going to want to go to your shitty website if somebody is only, you know, if all you're posting is shit. Like, yes. <laughs> If the only Quality reason why people, over quantity. Exactly. But they don't, you know, it, it's, it's when you're a corp, when you have that corporate mentality that everybody needs to be, you know, and, and, you know, everybody needs to be competing with each other and we need to be doing this and we need to be doing it better. Mm -hmm. So, but nobody wants to hear about that. They just want, they just care about profits. So great. How are sales doing? Sales are not doing good anymore because our radio station's ratings are starting to go down because everybody's passion is starting to go down. If you don't invest in your talent, if you don't invest in people and make them feel like they want to be there and to engage with their audience, well, like, what's the incentive to do so? If you really want your station to succeed, you need support staff, you need support, and you need flexibility to actually do what you want to be doing in that process. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, otherwise you're just like, if the, the, the listeners don't care, they're not gonna, they're not gonna engage with it. So like, what's the point of having, of a radio station, having a TikTok account, if you're not doing anything with it, if you don't have a strategy, if you create it and it's just sitting there with three followers, that's going to look bad because right. you're not doing anything with it. So like have a, uh, have an actual plan in place. Um, I had, I had a conversation with, with a program director who was like, well, yeah, the stuff that you're posting on your TikTok is not, that's not something that we want for the radio station. And I'm thinking like, I mean, okay, it means I'm not going to make TikToks for the radio station. If you don't want right. the stuff that I'm making, let's talk about video games. Well, I can't talk about video games on the air anymore because I was told that's not our format. Women don't play video games. Are you kidding me? I know like, almost every woman I know plays video games. What are you talking about? We all play phone games. We all play Animal Crossing. We all play like d d Super Mario. Everybody knows about this stuff. This old school mentality of X people don't play video games or don't connect with this content is so outdated. Like, just... <sighs> it's just, it's crazy to me that radio so, well, you know how they'll say, oh, well, you know, invest in talent and all that. And they just don't. And, like, they don't know how or care to learn how and don't listen to the people that are actually doing it and connecting with the audiences. And the thing that's really frustrating, too, is that the people that they do end up getting for a lot of these things, they find every market or maybe not market, but every um, what's every format has, like, a couple of talents that they invest in. And it's only, like, maybe five to ten people. And they're big shows and they get syndicated everywhere. And more power to those shows. I think it's fantastic. And hell yeah, make that bank. But man, it sucks when you're listening to the radio station and something big is happening locally and no one is talking about it. They're taking prank phone calls. It's like, okay, but like there's massive fires happening over the hill or it's pouring down rain and the, you know, and 101 is, is slammed right now. Nobody, if, if you're not cracking the mic and you're not talking about things that people in your community are talking about, why are you even doing radio? 
Like, I get that you want to connect with people, but the best way to connect with people is to connect with them locally about things that they care about. Like, we know that, we see that, so I don't know why they still deny it. Local is where you're going to make your money. Well, local yep. is where you're going to be making your fans. Local is where you're going to be making it. You can't be making it on a national scale. Well, I mean, you know, a couple of people are going to be making it on a national sta national scale, and good for them. That's great. But the people that are, but the 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 small the the smaller radio DJs who might not have you know five hundred thousand followers on Instagram, well, they're still connecting with their community in a really important way. Going out to the local pride events, going to if if you're a local, I mean, oh my gosh, we can't even get concert tickets anymore because the the promoters won't even give us those. They just say here's you know ten pair or here's ten tickets, five pairs. That's all you get. We ask them, okay, well, what if we had a local DJ there somewhere? No, why would we do that? Well, because you're going to our city. We are a part of this city. We are yeah. we're already connected with this audience. This audience already has a relationship with us, whereas with you, maybe they maybe they don't, maybe they do. Who knows? But it's not on a day. The, the way in which we're able to connect with people is on a much more uh, emotional and uh, and personal level then Blake Shelton can, you know? Like, people may enjoy Blake Shelton's music, but they're not going to be... Blake is never going to be talking about what's happening in uh, downtown San Jose on any given day. If Blake Shelton has a podcast, I'm sure he does. I'm sure he's got, like, five of them. He's never going to talk about Salinas. He's never going to talk about Gilroy. He's never going to talk about Cupertino because he has no reason to. Unless it's, hey, we're coming there and we're going to perform there because that's how he's making his money. But, yeah. Local radio, if, if, if corporate really wants to succeed and wants this industry to evolve, they need to invest locally again. It's like we've been doing this, I, like, hell, I've been making podcasts for over a decade now. And no radio station has ever said, hey, what if we help you with this? Never. I've never gotten that at any of the clusters I've worked at. Getting us, there was a um, there was a consultant that was on the the East Coast, and their name is escaping me right now. But they had this whole big thing in like the mid to late two thousands, um, where they would go around to radio stations on the East Coast, and they would ask um, the uh, the stations like, "Hey, uh, what is they go to each each and every person? Hey, go to that board op over there who's only working, you know." 20 hours a week. What are you interested in? What's interesting that you, what do you know a lot about? And give that guy a podcast, give him resources. And that guy, maybe it's train spotting. Well, that guy now is, is your go-to guy when it comes to trains. So if ever there's a story about trains, you can talk to this guy about it. He's already got a podcast about it. He's talking about it already. You can help build revenue from that podcast that people who are obsessed with trains are going to be listening to. If you help promote it, then he's going to get more listeners and it's going to funnel back to the radio station. If you, uh, and, and that seems so, uh, it seems so logical to me that you would, you would do that because you're at least like fostering, you're fostering talent. Number one, you're fostering passion and you're actually building a new revenue stream for your, <laughs> for your audience. And on top of that, hey, maybe give that guy a bonus and, like, make him full-time and give him benefits now because he's actually contributing to your bottom line. The, the number of times I've, I've told people, like, they'd, they'd ask, oh, hey, what do you do? And I'd say, oh, I work in radio. The number of times somebody would say to me, that's still a thing, is I like... Know, right? <laughs> and the reason why they do that is because locally they don't have a station that they connect with anymore. Okay, you're playing, you know, you've got a radio station that plays Ed Sheeran, that's fine. Everybody listens to Ed Sheeran. Great. But what is that radio station doing to connect better with that local person? What is, what are they doing? You know, they always say, you know, uh, uh, Jane Doe is your, your target demo, right? She's 35 years old, has a kid. Uh, she, you know, is working X number of things. Maybe she works for some, you know, uh, some white collar job. That's who you need to be targeting always. Well, she's not the only person that's listening to the radio station, and we shouldn't just be focusing on her. Um, we should be focusing on like literally everyone in the community. And what are people in the in, in, what are they listening to right now? Okay, let's talk about those putting those songs on the radio. Yeah, it's great to put the latest TikTok trend on the radio. That's fine. That's going to be like, oh, I remember that song from TikTok. But that's not going to like emotionally connect with anyone. 
No. If anything, I think it makes people go, wait, that's like the race station's just now playing this? Yeah. It, it, this song has been big for like eight months. Like Gail's ABCDEFU was a huge thing on TikTok for like four months. And then it wasn't until six months later after that song debuted that it became a big thing on radio. And it was just like, and now we're still playing it. Why are we still playing it? It's been out for over a year. Um, if people are oh probably gosh. so sick of it. Yeah, and, like, you know, Burn. Okay, well, we actually got to care about Burn again. Why? Because people can get... They can get their music elsewhere. So let's talk about your, you know, having a, a your, your, your music cycle every, you know, 60 minutes is really not good anymore. We should probably have a little bit more rotation, a little bit more variety in rotation. I'm of the opinion, and this might be, like, a hot take opinion, that genre doesn't really matter a whole lot anymore. Everybody listens to hip hop. Everybody listens to pop. Everybody listens to country. Everybody has like a couple of songs that they really, really love. Spotify isn't really our enemy. They should be our research tool. Like, yes. Hell, what is what is the number one? So if it, uh, hell, Bad Bunny is number one. Frick, I don't care if he's he's. Uh, it, it's only a Spanish language song. Why aren't we playing it on the pop station to bring in the that audience? Like. Why are we, I don't know, the more local we are, I mean, hell, if corporate really wanted to do us a solid, give us the money for support staff, you know, hands off. <laughs> uh, yep, yes, exactly. <laughs> Unless there's like something really wrong, then absolutely hands on, but hands off for the most part. And, uh, you know, it, it actually give us raises now. I'm tired of this like horizontal raise structure that we've had for, you know, the past 30 years where to get a raise in radio, you had to move to another radio station and lie on your resume about how much money you were making. It's like, this is the, it's so awful. Just give people freaking tie it to inflation. Just give them an inflationary raise. Like that's going to make them want to work for you more. They're going to want to work for you. You're going to build some kind of loyalty with them. Like, if you look at the job boards, like, what are what are they looking for right now? Well, they've just fired a bunch of people that did multiple jobs. So what they want are people who can handle multiple jobs at once. What's the pay? $40,000 a year. Well, that would have been great in 2001. Hey, guess what? Rent is over $30,000 a year. I need, like, we need to eat, too. <laughs> Being able to support yourself, if you're financially comfortable, you're actually going to be more likely to be doing things that you're passionate about. You're not gonna have the money stress on your brain, so you're actually gonna feel okay. You'll be like, oh, okay, I like this job, I wanna keep this job. Or having to take a second job. You know, a lot of people, they have to take a second one and they're burnt out for their radio job, and then the radio station's upset that they're not getting this great show and this great product. I'm like, well, you cap the, you, they're not even full-time, you cap their hours, you know, at 37, so they can't be full-time, expect you to give them a great show, and they can't have benefits. They're working at a grocery store, too, to make this work, and so, and you're expecting this great product for you. Radio Broadcasting 123A at Ohlone College in Fremont, Tom Braceno, the professor, said, very first day of radio, I remember exactly what he said the very first lecture. If you're here to make money, go home. You're not going to make money. And it sucks, but it's true. You're not going to make a whole lot of money. A lot of the reason why you're going to be doing this job is because you're passionate about uh, You're passionate about entertainment. You're passionate about connecting with people. And it sucks. It sucks that that's the case. There are still people, young people, that are still interested here and there. What would you tell somebody, you know, again, kind of being, do, you know, experiencing both sides of it now, obviously, from support, what you would tell somebody trying to get in now? Do not compromise yourself for your career. If your job is telling you not to express yourself as your true, authentic identity, find another job. And that's hard to, it's hard to hear, but it's so true. Um, because you will never, ever be happy if you do not have, if you, if you're not able to express yourself authentically, if you're not able to connect with people on an authentic way. If you are a queer person in radio, hell yeah, we need more of you. Um, we need more of us. We need, like, hell, radio should be a hell of a lot more queer than it is. Like, how much, you look at, you know, the pop stars that we play, a lot of them are queer. Uh, a lot of the hell, even a lot of the people in classic rock were as well. They just didn't have the words for it. A lot of the people in, there's a lot of people in country that are queer. 
we should be able to have those voices on the air, and that shouldn't be a political statement. That should just be how it is. Um, but it is. Unfortunately, it, it, it's, it will, if it affects the bottom line, corporate is going gonna, is gonna to have a problem with it, it whether or not that's illegal. <laughs> so don't, so number one, don't compromise yourself for your career. If you uh, find somewhere else to channel that energy, be it Twitch, there's amazing, amazing people in the live streaming community that are queer, that can help, and you can connect with. I have, and they're wonderful. They're some of my best friends in the world now. Um, but that's, that's really my advice.